Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the role of the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland and ADH in osmoregulation. You should then be able to describe the effect of ADH on the cells of the collecting ducts. And finally, you should be able to describe how this is an example of negative feedback. In the last video, we looked at how water is reabsorbed in the nephron. And if you haven't seen that video, then you should watch it now. We saw that the loop of Henle creates a low water potential in the medulla of the kidney. As fluid moves through the nephron, water can then be reabsorbed through the walls of the collecting duct by osmosis. So in this video, we're looking at how the reabsorption of water is controlled. Scientists call this process osmoregulation. Now, osmoregulation is extremely important, and that's because the water potential of the blood must be kept within a certain range. If the water potential of the blood is too low, then water will leave cells by osmosis. And if the water potential of the blood is too high, then water will enter the cells by osmosis. And either of these situations could be harmful. Now, the first thing you need to understand is how water enters and leaves the body. We take water into the body via fluids that we drink and the food that we eat. Water leaves the body via urine, sweating and defecation. Now, the body regulates the water potential of the blood via the volume and concentration of urine. If the water potential of the blood is too low, then we need to conserve water. In this case, we produce a small volume of highly concentrated urine. However, if the water potential of the blood is too high, then we need to expel water. So in this case, we produce a large volume of very dilute urine. So let's look at how the body achieves this. Osmoregulation is coordinated by the hypothalamus in the brain. The hypothalamus synthesizes the hormone ADH, or antidiuretic hormone. ADH is then transported to the posterior pituitary gland, where it's stored. Now, the hypothalamus contains cells called osmoreceptors. Osmoreceptors are sensitive to the water potential of the blood. Imagine that a person has not taken in enough fluid, or has lost fluid, for example by sweating. This person is now dehydrated, and the water potential of the blood decreases. Water now moves out of the osmoreceptor cells by osmosis, causing the osmoreceptor cells to shrink. When the osmoreceptor cells shrink, they trigger the posterior pituitary gland to release ADH into the bloodstream. OK, I'm showing you here one of the cells which forms the walls of the collecting ducts. I'm also showing a nearby blood capillary. ADH is shown in the blood as green dots. Now, the cells forming the walls of the collecting duct have protein receptors in their membrane, and these receptors are specific for ADH. The cells also have vesicles containing protein channels for water. These water channels are called aquaporins. OK, now the ADH molecules attach to the cell surface receptors. This triggers an enzyme called adenylate cyclase to produce the molecule cyclic AMP in the cell cytoplasm. Cyclic AMP is also called CAMP, and molecules like cyclic AMP are called second messengers. Cyclic AMP triggers the vesicles to move to and fuse with the cell surface membrane. And the aquaporin molecules insert into the cell surface membrane like this. Now, a large number of water molecules move through the aquaporins into the cell by osmosis. These water molecules can then move by osmosis into the medulla and are then carried away in the bloodstream. ADH also causes the wall of the collecting duct to be more permeable to urea. Urea now moves from the fluid in the collecting duct into the medulla, and this further lowers the water potential of the medulla, increasing the reabsorption of water. So the effect of this is that less water leaves the body in urine, and this prevents the water potential of the blood from falling any further. The osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus also trigger feelings of thirst, and this makes the person drink more water. OK, so drinking more water now causes the water potential of the blood to rise. Osmoreceptors now detect the rise in blood water potential. This triggers the posterior pituitary gland to release less ADH into the bloodstream. 
Now the aquaporin molecules return back to their vesicles. This makes the walls of the collecting duct much less permeable to water. So less water is reabsorbed and a large volume of dilute urine is produced. So as you can see, the water potential of the blood is tightly controlled. And this is an example of negative feedback. The water potential of the blood is maintained within a normal range. Any change in the water potential is detected and the change is reversed. So to summarize, if the water potential falls, then osmoreceptors detect the fall and this leads to more ADH being released. More water is reabsorbed in the collecting duct and we produce a small volume of concentrated urine. This returns the water potential of the blood back to its normal range. If the water potential rises, then osmoreceptors detect the rise and this leads to less ADH being released. Now, less water is reabsorbed in the collecting ducts and we produce a large volume of dilute urine. And again, this returns the water potential of the blood back to its normal range. In the next video, we look at what happens during kidney failure.